Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're looking at yet another mini PC on the channel. We haven't looked at a Dell yet, and I found this one on Amazon the other day for $150. This is the Inspiron i3050. This runs uh, the full version of Windows 10. It costs about $150 at the time I'm recording this review, and it also comes with a wired keyboard and mouse. Nothing fancy, but it does give you everything in the box except the monitor that you need to get started. It actually costs more right now without the keyboard and mouse than it does with it, so I would suggest just uh, buying it with those two things to save yourself some money. It has a Celeron J1800 processor at 2.4 gigahertz. Now, if you are familiar with your Intel chips, uh, this is the Atom Bay Trail family of processors, except this has two cores versus the Atom Bay Trails four, and it also is clocked at a faster clock speed than the Atom chips are. So you have less cores but it runs at a faster uh, clock speed. So what that means is that it might feel a little bit faster perhaps than uh, some of the $200 laptops we've looked at when you're just browsing the web or working on a Word document, uh, but it'll be slower on multitasking kinds of things. So there might be some uh, things it does a little bit better than a $200 laptop and some things it won't do as well. Uh, for most people, you're not really gonna tell the difference, but it's important to point that out. Uh, two gigabytes of RAM and a 32 gigabyte solid state drive. You'll see in a second, this is upgradable, so you can add some stuff to it if you wish to do that. It's also got wireless AC on board, just a one by one radio, but it is supporting the newer AC standard. It also has Bluetooth built in too for wireless keyboards and mice and all the other things you might connect via Bluetooth. Your power button is here in the front. They have a disk utility uh, access light here that'll tell you when the drive is being accessed. I like that being a geek. Uh, on this side, you have a USB 3.0 port, a USB 2.0 port, uh, and you have a Kensington lock here to prevent theft. You can lock it down on your desk. Uh, you plug your power cord into here. This is a display port port here and an HDMI port here. You can drive two displays out of it. I don't believe it supports 4K, uh, but I think you can get two 1080p displays going with this. Uh, you also have two more USB 2.0 ports here in the back, gigabit ethernet and a headset microphone adapter there. And you have a card reader for SD card. So pretty good uh, layout overall. And the cool thing is, is that this is not a very difficult computer to upgrade, at least so far as its RAM and storage are concerned. Uh, so the bottom portion here comes right off. There's only four screws holding it down. And when you get inside, you'll notice that you've got the RAM chip staring at you. So you can take these two gigabytes of RAM out, uh, put in up to eight, I believe on here. I think that's what this chipset supports. So that's kind of a nice thing to be able to swap that out very easily. Uh, you also have room here for a full-size hard drive, although they don't give you the connector. So I don't think you're gonna be able to actually use a full-size hard drive if you put it in there, but it does have room for that. They must have some other configurations that they're thinking of doing that do have that. Uh, but you will see kind of tucked underneath there with that little CE sticker uh, is the M2 SATA drive. So you can pop out that SSD drive and put in a larger one. You'll have to probably disconnect the motherboard here to do that, but uh, not hard to do. You can swap out that hard drive and put in a larger solid state disk if you wish to do that. And you'll see later in the review, there's uh, some things about this that I like that I haven't seen working on too many mini PCs, especially for home theater people. So this might actually be something to consider, uh, especially if you are into home theater and don't mind taking apart your computer to make it a little bit better. So let's take a look and see how this performs on things that most people would use a mini PC for, and then we'll have that home theater discussion too. All right, so let's boot this thing up and see how fast it takes for it to get to the Windows desktop. It really does perform about where we've seen a lot of these other mini PCs go. Uh, Windows 10 and even Windows 8 for that matter really are uh, pretty fast on the boot up side of things. So there we go, we are into our desktop there. I'm just gonna log in real quick and we'll start doing some web browsing, some gaming, and a couple other things too. Let's take a look. All right, so we'll start with a little web browsing. We'll go hit up the uh, New York Times briefly. We'll see how that comes up here. And you will see a little bit of snappiness to this. And that's one thing that's been apparent across most of the mini PCs I have looked at over the last couple of years is that it does seem to respond uh, fairly quickly, not as fast as a more expensive computer might, but uh, it does uh, pull things up relatively quickly here. And you can definitely use this to browse the web. Uh, this may also appear a little bit faster than some of those uh, laptops we've looked at with the Atom processor. Again, because uh, this chip is running running faster, it can do this kind of stuff a little bit quicker so long as this is really the only main task on the computer at any given time. So you can see how fast that comes up there. I'll go visit my YouTube channel real quick and we'll see how fast video uh, works on these things. These tend to do very well even on uh, slower computers than this and it looks like uh, my YouTube channel is coming up pretty quickly here and we should have the autoplay video starting up any second here as well. There we go. And I'll switch this into uh, HD here and we'll see how well this does at that. So we'll go to the 1080p version and let that 
uh, reconfigure. I am connected right now via uh, gigabit ethernet, so that is going to give us a little bit better performance here, but I can go uh, full screen on that, and you can see how that is working now. So it seems like we've got a pretty good frame rate. Uh, all seems well. I did test uh, 60 frames per second video before I shot this one, and it seems like that uh, is working also very, very nicely too. And on the Octane benchmark test, we get a score of 8,099, and that actually puts it in a pretty good spot. And you'll notice that this is performing better on this benchmark test than some of those Atom Bay Trail computers are, and that is because this chip runs faster. Now, it does not have as many cores as those other chips do, uh, so there are some areas where those ones might do a little bit better, but insofar as your web browsing experience is concerned, this will appear to be more snappy because it can process things a little bit faster. Now, one other thing to look at, though, is uh, the newest round of Atom chips, which are called the Cherry Trail chips. That is uh, found on the new Kangaroo Mini PC, which is a $99 Windows computer, and you'll see there that uh, this is about even with that one. So that even though this is an older chip, it's doing as well as some of the newer ones are doing, at least insofar as web browsing is concerned. Now let's take a look at Microsoft Word, and then we'll look at its gaming performance, because that's one area uh, where you won't see better performance out of this older chip. And as expected, Microsoft Word also performs a little bit better on here than it does on some of the other Atom chips we've looked at. Uh, so it is, you know, able to scroll through the document here a little bit faster than we've seen on some of those other PCs. And you can see here too, as we're resizing things and moving around, uh, that it is rendering just slightly faster. So it's not like the other ones are unusable. This one just feels a little bit snappier because its processor is clocked at a higher speed. And I always like to look at Minecraft when we do a mini PC review. And as you can see here, we're actually seeing some pretty decent frame rates about where I would expect this type of mini PC to be. So this isn't too bad. Uh, we are running the OptiFine performance enhancing plugin that gives us a little bit better frame rate uh, than we otherwise would get. But as you can see here, we're hovering in the 20 to 30 frames per second territory. Occasionally it will dip down a little bit as things load in, but it really isn't too bad overall. Uh, and I think it's uh, on par with what we've seen with other Atom Bay Trail based devices. Uh, one thing to note is that there's a bunch of new uh, mini PCs that we've looked at and a few laptops running with a new version of the Celeron chip that actually doesn't do as well in Minecraft. Now those chips, rather than clocking higher, are now clocking lower and they can do more per cycle, but things like Minecraft really bog them down. So that Acer Revo build we looked at last week doesn't do as well uh, as this Dell does, and this Dell is running with an older processor. It's kind of funny how some things do better and other things don't. Uh, Minecraft is one of the things that uh, does better with old stuff. And on the 3D Mark benchmark test, which measures how well it might do on a more modern game, uh, we get a score of 1,108, uh, which puts it pretty much where the Atom Bay Trail devices are, except in the physics department. It's a little bit lower on the physics test, and that is because that test is more CPU dependent, and that's where the Atom Bay Trail with more cores might do a little bit better. So it can do more things at once, and it does better on that physics test than this machine does. Uh, but none of them are going to play Grand Theft Auto V all that well, if at all. So uh, don't get your hopes up to play modern games, but things like Minecraft should work fine. Now, one interesting thing happened when I uh, loaded up Kodi and I played back some of my Blu-ray MKV files. Now, I do this on all of the mini PCs that we review here on the channel because I'm always curious to see how it might do as a home theater playback device. And uh, the movies that I have on my hard drive downstairs are the full Blu-ray file, no changes, no recompression or anything like that. These are the movies that were on the disc. I just store them on my hard drive for convenience. And uh, what's nice about this, like any other mini PC we've tested, is that they uh, are able to come up and play it very, very quickly without any uh, lag or anything like that. It really does play nicely. But what separates this machine from some of the other mini PCs we've looked at is that it supports some of the higher end digital audio formats like DTS HD and Dolby True HD. I tried that with every single mini PC I look at. They all do the playback portion just fine, but they don't all support the audio formats. This one does. So I think Dell has uh, made an investment in licensing those two formats from uh, DTS and from Dolby to uh, be able to get those things to work on home theater devices. The color on my television looks a little bit off on it, so I do need to probably tweak some calibration settings to get the color just right. But uh, the fact is, if you're looking for a home theater PC that's cheap and can play back a lot of those files, this one might be uh, worth considering because not many mini PCs can do what this one does. So that is the Dell Inspiron i3050, a nice little mini PC. You know, it's about where some of the other ones are, maybe a little bit snappier for web browsing and word processing, uh, but it won't do as well on some of the multitasking that you might want to do with one of these things. But uh, for $150 with the keyboard and mouse, it's a very good value uh, and every bit as good as many of the other mini PCs we've looked at. And if you uh, 
are a home theater person, this one might do a little bit better uh, than some of the other ones, given that it supports some of those audio formats that the other ones don't. So pretty good value from Dell and definitely worth checking out. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.